<clears throat> Thank you for inviting me uh, to talk about the global plastic problem. Uh, as you can imagine, it's a huge subject and I'm excited that we can learn a little bit uh, about what um, we know uh, and some of the things. You know, Thank you uh, for inviting me to talk about the global plastic problem. Uh, I'm Dr. Robert Sluka. I'm based in Florida in the USA, and I lead Arasha's uh, Global Marine Conservation Program. Uh, several years ago, we started a program called Hope for the Ocean, where we tried to tackle plastic pollution. Uh, started in France, has uh, moved to Portugal, and Arasha Portugal is doing an amazing job uh, working on plastic pollution. And we now study plastic uh, in America, in Kenya, in New Zealand, in Europe, uh, all over the world. So we're excited to share a little bit of what we've been learning uh, about this very difficult problem. There's a stretch of the Florida coastline called Playa Linda, which looms in the shadow of the Kennedy Space Center. The beach has the barest of amenities, focusing attention on the beauty of native flora, protecting sand dunes from erosion by wind and wave. Ghost crabs, like this one pictured here, patrol the their burrows, and white ibis hunt in the shadows, shallows for mole crabs. We often look out for sharks in the shallows as we swim, both hoping and not hoping that we will see one. This description of sandy beaches idealizes their ecology. We can detail what this means ecologically by understanding how a crab is to live on a sandy beach. Growing from a planktonic larval form, settling onto a beach, digging a hole to live in, molting as it grows, becoming sexually mature and finding mates, and eventually dying and decomposing or feeding a seabird hunting on that beach. Our scientific knowledge helps us to appreciate this beauty and to describe ecologically what it means to flourish. I think it is important to start with the end in mind and for us to understand the goal of living sustainably with plastic. Ideally, our use of plastic continues to allow for ecological flourishing. It is clear though that currently this is not the case. What is plastic? Plastic has, has changed our world since their manufacture began in earnest in the 1950s, often for the better. It is a marvel of engineering cheap, lightweight, and moldable. There are multiple types of plastic made from various small molecules that are put together into longer units called polymers, often derived from hydrocarbons and oil and natural gas. Additives are used to give plastic its characteristics. The scale of global plastic production and its nature all but ensures that plastic pollution is found everywhere in the environment. So where is it? Basically, in almost every species and habitat studied, plastic is found, ingested, and passed up the food chain. We went to the deepest part of the ocean, the Marianas Trench, there was plastic. If you go down to the bottom of the Mediterranean, there's plastic. Every species uh, that we've examined has some amount of plastic in it. So it's basically everywhere. You can't get away from plastic. Worldwide, an estimated 8,300 million metric tons of virgin plastics have been produced from 1950 to 2017. As of 2015, only 9% of total plastic waste was recycled, 12% was incinerated, often generating power, and 79% ended up in landfills or in the environment. So why is it there? How, how does it get out into the environment? Land-based microplastics, so small pieces of, of plastic that are broken down, end up in freshwater and marine environments by passing through wastewater treatment plants, being swept up in stormwater runoff and through industry effluent, so they outflow from industry. Other sources of microfibers um, come from the washing of plastic-based textiles like fleece, which shed an amazing 1,900 fibers per garment 
per wash. Sea-based plastic pollution sources include commercial and recreational fishing, research, believe it or not, tourism and shipping, abandoned, lost, and discarded fishing gear is widely known to ghost fish, catching and killing not just fish, but marine mammals and reptiles. Much of the ocean-based uh, plastic pollution actually starts out on land. There's a systemic problem. There's plastic loss at creation, transport, use, reuse, and disposal. So every part of the system, we find that there's loss. The way it's made, uh, when it's being trucked around, uh, the small plastic pellets called nurdles fall off of uh, big containers, fall off of ships and end up in the sea. We find them on the beaches here in Florida and everywhere in the world. When we use them, when we try to reuse them, uh, recycling, and even in a disposal, ending up in landfills, they blow around and end up in the sea. So it's at each point in this system, then there's loss. And so there is no single solution to the plastic problem. And so it's a systemic problem. The whole system uh, is a problem. And so we need whole system-wide solutions. Well, so what are the impacts? Um, plastic is not inherently good or bad. It just is. How we produce it, transport it, use it, and dispose of it, though, has ethical implications for good or bad. Science is showing us how that how we are interacting with plastic has significant negative consequences for people and places. Theologians are increasingly showing us, as Dave Bookless will in a moment, how plastic is impacting our relationship with God. We must though also celebrate the amazing uses which are good for our relationships. Plastic in cars reduces weight and thus fuel, fuel use, helping to reduce climate impacts. Some human transplants utilize long lasting plastic which reduces negative impacts of other materials on longevity. Three-dimensional plastic printers can make parts and create products that will continue to equalize global inequalities in manufacturing ability. Plastic is our creation. So while we have responsibility for all our actions and products, there's a special responsibility for plastic as it is something that did not exist in the created order until we made it. The impact of plastic pollution is, depends in part on the size and chemical composition of individual pieces of plastic. I think it's important to recognize that plastic is not plastic, is not plastic. There are thousands of kinds of plastic and the impact depends on what kind of things are added to it, how big it is, how small it is. All of these plastics break down into smaller pieces called microplastics which are defined as being less than five millimeters in size. Plastic doesn't biodegrade. It will succumb to photodegradation. So because of the sun, it breaks down a little bit due to sunlight, UV exposure, and, and uh, the, the impact of waves and wind and water and salinity. Plastics by design are chemically complex and diverse from one another to uh, making them difficult to recycle and reuse. Differences in additive chemicals, strengths, thicknesses, and sizes means that there are thousands of different kinds and configurations. Animals uh, might by chance or intentionally consume plastics. Uh, maybe you've seen internet photos of the stomach contents of albatross, whales, or sea turtles that have ingested plastics. A wide range of fish and shark species attack floating plastic potentially viewing it as prey. Cattle and other livestock eat plastics, especially when feeding in urban areas where trash is prevalent and animals are allowed to graze freely. Plastics also release chemicals and absorb environmental toxins. Plastic is in our food chain too, including drinking water and the long-term human health impacts are unknown. Dying from plastic con consumption in livestock may present a food security threat particularly in the global south where livestock graze in urban centers and in garbage. European seafood consumers will eat 11,000 microplastic items per year, according to results extrapolated from a study on blue mussel and Pacific oyster. Plastic pollution impacts public health in ways which might be unexpected or unrecognized. 
Tier Fund re research indicates that between 400,000 and a million people die each year in developing countries because of diseases related to mismanaged waste. This includes blocking waterways, which cause flooding resulting in waterborne diseases, creating a breeding ground for infectious insects and increasing diarrheal diseases. There's so many ways in which plastic impacts our lives. Some of it is good, but a lot of it is, is not. Plastics break relationships and therefore conservation or reducing plastic use is part of the healing of relationships. As we restore beaches and other habitats to what they were meant to be, animals and people will flourish in a world God created beautiful. Is there hope? I'm excited to discuss with you further uh, how we can combat this problem and see the different plans that are involved. Arasha has developed this plastics toolbox with a series of resources that you might find helpful. So we look forward to working together to uh, stop the menace of plastic pollution.